Politics as usual, ladies and gentlemen. We got a special guest in the building, Saj Dupree. How you feeling? I'm grateful, and um, I'm happy to be here. I met you online, hashtag, and now we're here. Yeah. Well, definitely appreciate you for reaching out. I had a chance to dive in uh, to your track list and everything, and you're, you're dope. You have a dope message, and mm -hmm. you 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 stand for something, you know? Yeah. So, um, can you tell us where you're from so that people have some background on you? Yeah, I'm from Willembro, New Jersey. Um, it's pretty much majority black suburban town, um, low country. And um, that's really all it is, it's just, it's very dry. You know what I mean? A lot of trees, just your typical suburban environment is just the majority of black people, that's all it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like, what was it like growing up there and how maybe how it shaped you as an artist? It's, um, it was boring. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but I mean, I, I mean, I was able to go like go outside, hang out with your friends and stuff like that. Um, because it was so dry, I spent a majority of my time recording in my in my mom's house. Okay. So like, I'll get off at three three o'clock. She usually worked three to eleven, so she let me use my equipment in her bedroom, and I used to record in her bedroom every single day. Dope. That's all I did, and um. Of course, even you know, like I'll go out with my friends and stuff, but I spend the majority of my time in her in her room just recording. Me and some of my um, my homies still to this day. Nice. That's all we really did. Okay. Um, you have this track, Don't Shoot. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that? What was your inspiration behind it? Yeah, so I wrote that song. I just wanted to switch up my content. Um, I was going through writer's block for a long time, and I was still trying to find like my, my sound as I'm getting older. And I, I pretty much just wanted something to where I can like express the way that I feel about things without having to 
just talk about it. It's one thing to just like post your frustrations and things like that, but it's like people not hearing that the way that it sounds, the way that I'm typing it out. Mm-hmm. So I just decided to actually like write about it or whatever. And it came naturally. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of figured like something was telling me like this is pretty much the lane that you need to be going to because I was I was stuck and I was stagnant making music that like a majority of artists already make. We always make the same type of content of music. Mm-hmm. We talk about like love, uh, money, jewelry, pain, all types of stuff. But there's really just not a lot of artists, especially female wise, that are making music like the song that I recorded. Mm-hmm. But I just felt that once I recorded it, I knew that was the lane I needed to go to. Okay. And then like, <clears throat> it just works out like that. So who would you say are your artistic influences? For for hip hop, um, Jay Z, his favorite rapper, um, Tupac is second. Okay. No, nah, I lied. Tupac is first. <laughs> Tupac is first because I I literally studied his art. Okay. Um, Jay Z second. I mean, all the '90s. Honestly, all the '90s rappers. That's what's what I grew up listening to. Two mm-hmm. thousands too. Um, I loved Nelly growing up too because of the way how diverse he was using his voice and stuff. R and B wise, Brandy's my favorite singer. I grew up on Destiny's Child, 90s, female groups. That's mm-hmm. where it is, 90s and 2000s. Okay. Yeah. That's, you can't go wrong with that. That's the golden era. And then the early 2000s was amazing, you know, so. Yeah, no, that was, no, that was the time where, like, every artist came out was different. The sound was different. You just know who it was when you listen to them. Mm-hmm. And just everything about that era is kind of like, it's like the soul of the music now, like. We would never get that time period ever again. Mm-hmm. That's literally what it is. So it should, it should be studied. It's a lot to dissect from that too. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, rap has always been uh, an evolving genre, um, but today it seems like rappers, famous rappers, are dying at a high rate. Do you think like rap is a dangerous career choice? Honestly, no. Okay. You want to know why? Because um, I don't think Drake fears for his life. You know what I'm saying? Just like, or like, I don't even know who's really be out right now. But for example, because I feel like it's the content that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if your content is about violence, you're talking about, you know, your enemies and things like that nature, you're bringing that negative energy to you. Mm -hmm. Or for instance, if you're if you're talking about even something as simple as like if you're talking about like oh I'm, I won't live here long enough and things like that, rappers have made comments like that about their mental health. Mm-hmm. They gone. It's like it's the power of the tongue thing. Okay. You know what I mean. So and it's about how you present yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. All that like flashing money on the internet, jewelry, talking mess all the time. Is that it always comes back. Mm-hmm. That's really what it is. I don't, I don't look at it as being dangerous. It's just that you're making it dangerous for yourself. That's how I feel. I'm not. I know exactly what you're talking about when they be like, being a rapper is the most dangerous job. I, I don't think that. Okay. Not at all. That's a, that's an interesting perspective, you know, because that energy you get put out there. Because there are artists that may not be gang gang, but when you say things like, oh, when I'm gone, you know, or like premonition of like mm-hmm. death you know that that has a real energy yeah. to it and then right? yeah so when you think about it usually it's the majority of male rappers that are dying women aren't dying you know what i'm saying the women content and the, the men right now is two totally different things that they're talking about right now mm-hmm. so but that's a whole nother conversation the, the, but it, <laughs> it needs to be had that's that's yeah. very that's a dope perspective you know just continue to say that mm-hmm. um would you prefer to do independent labels or major label? Uh, no, I have I have a label okay. that I started investing into. Okay, but I feel like I would take I would stay independent, but get a major distribution to start off. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't tie myself into no three sixty. Hell no. It's a lot, you know. They they want certain things from you at that point. Yeah, and um, I don't know. Me me naturally, I like to have control. And I need control of my own stuff. Mm-hmm. And like to be able to release when I want to release, make the music I want to make. Don't have me come in here straight rapping and then tell me I got to go pop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's usually how it works. Yeah. But I feel like a distribution deal for an independent artist would be like something that's beneficial to the next level. That's my opinion. I agree. Yeah. I agree. You, you talk about control. 
Mm-hmm. One thing I noticed I, I, I've seen from your IG is that you have crowd control. How important is it to be to have that as an artist and do live performances? Uh, see, I didn't I didn't always have that though. Okay. And I mean, I'm still developing it. It's more so of um, I learned it's the confidence part, being confident in the music that you're performing. Mm-hmm. When I was making previous music, I loved it, but I wasn't confident performing it, mm-hmm. and that's what also made me sit back and have to rethink about what type of content of music do I want to make? Like, what do I want to talk about? So when I started making the song like Don't Shoot and the rest of the songs for the EP, mm-hmm. I felt confident performing those songs. And that's another reason why I said it let me know that I was like, this is the path that I'm supposed to be on. Okay. And not only that, people feel that though. Mm-hmm. It's different. It sounds different. I'm talking about things is different. So it's like, it made a big difference than my previous performances. It was just the confidence and the message that I was presenting. I agree. You you feel like a a professional of the sorts. You know, this is your your you you know this subject in and out. You know? Yeah, yeah. Now for real, and and I studied that that subject mm-hmm. like thoroughly, and then it's like I'm not the type of like artist that's like crazy on the stage. I don't be jumping all over the place. But like I said, I studied the way Jay Z performs. Mm-hmm. He's not a jumper around, mm-hmm. but he has crowd control. Mm-hmm. The way that he can perform, and I know you've seen probably perform before. Like he don't need to be doing all that extra stuff. He knows how to rap, yes. and he knows how to control the crowd, even if he was standing in one spot. And that's just like for R and B. Mariah Carey don't got to do all that. She stands in one spot and performs the same notes. Mm-hmm. Crowd go crazy. That's what it is. Like that's how I look at it, though. Everybody can't be Sasha Fierce. You know? No, for real. <laughs> yeah, that's like you gotta find what you're comfortable with. Because I'm yeah. no, I'm not the jumping around, be acting all crazy. I'm mad, chill, mellow. Yeah. But the way like I watch how Jay Z performs, I was like, that's exactly what I what I want to be doing. Mm-hmm. Like, and they be into it. People, he gets you knowing all the words. You be like, yeah, I know this song word for word. Yeah. You know. Yeah, he Facts. don't do a lot at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any hidden talents? Yeah, I mean, I can I could play basketball like for real. Okay. Yeah. So you who for real? Nice. Yeah, like. Okay. I, know, I was a three point shooter. Okay. I could play uh, point guard, power forward. Mm. I played center. Okay. Yeah. So you 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 hooped like uh, collegiate? I did. I started. Well, I'll say I started at age six. Okay. Um, my dad used to take me all over the place to play basketball. Nice. Um, I remember I I did have dreams of being in WNBA. Okay. And then I remember I used to play street ball in Brooklyn when I was younger. Mm. And then um, I played in high school. I went to a community college. I played for like a year and a half. But I started just like not loving that sport the way I used to for some reason. I feel like when you go to college, it really tests you if this is really something you want to do. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't. And that's you all. It's, you know, that's kudos to like professional athletes because mm-hmm. that is a dedication. You know, like how you mm-hmm. dedicate to your craft, the work you put in. They putting in that work for that sport, you know? Mm-hmm. And this is like, you know, they, they'll crack on like the 12th guy on the bench, but it's like, oh, he's making more money than most people will ever make, you know? Yeah, yeah. Basketball uh, is this it's a mental thing. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's another thing, it was like a challenge. But running all them laps, I wasn't with none of that. <laughs> it was too much of the physical for me. But at the same time, this was still during a time period when I was doing music too. Okay. And then I chose what I loved more. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's really how I went between Facts. the two. Facts. Um, how would you say you manage your mental health? Um, damn. All right, I'll say three things. One, uh, I could write something real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, I probably just go quiet for a little bit. Me talking to myself. Three, um. I could read something. I'll try to learn something new at least once a week. Mm-hmm. I think that helps too, to kind of stimulate my mind a little bit. Yeah. So that's pretty much all I do. It's nothing special. Yeah. I don't go to therapy or nothing. I kind of find my own therapy. Yeah, that's your own piece though. You, mm-hmm. know, you, you need that. That Especially the first one you said where it's write something. Writing your thoughts, writing it down, however you yeah. write it down, is therapeutic. Yep. Yeah. yeah, there's this thing I call... It's called like an artist depression phase. Mm-hmm. And I feel like every artist went through that phase or even still goes through it, no matter how big you are. It's kind of like the phase of like, you can go through writer's block or like you just feel like this ain't for you no more. 
you know, all that crazy feelings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I went through like those moments, like, I think I started music a long time ago. So I went through those phases a lot. Mm -hmm. So I figured like the way to balance it out is to probably just, as soon as I feel that way, you just write it down. And then eventually it just become a song. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then mm -hmm. it works like that. Okay. So. Okay. Um, we talked Don't Shoot earlier. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about your upcoming project, Open Eyes? Open Your Eyes? Yeah. All right, yeah. So the Open Your Eyes, uh, that was pretty much the transition of like coming into like a new person, mm -hmm. in, a sense, in a sense, of kind of being more involved with wanting to do more within the culture itself. And um, I know a lot and I'm knowledgeable on a lot, but I just needed to put it in the music because we know that music is the expression, it's emotion. Everybody loves music. Mm -hmm. And so I figured if I can make a catchy project, catchy hook and things like that and still deliver the message, people gonna like that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So then I started the first track with the Open Your Eyes one because I wanted to talk about the issues within our community of how like we have like all of this talent and we have power that we don't even know that we have. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to activate that power because we don't stick together as a as a whole. Agreed. That's the that's the problem that we have. We can literally do anything we want to do, but it's too much of the, the killing each other, competition with each other. I'm not trying to put you on, you know how all all that stuff go. Mm -hmm. So I made a song to start the intro of like no matter how, like we supposed to be like brothers and sisters. We not blood, but that's how we supposed to feel towards each other. And there's enough money for everybody. So then from there, it jumps into the don't shoot to now I'm changing it to going about how our people are treated in, in the uh, eyes of the law. And you know, that's been going on since the police was created. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Shift shift from that, I go to uh, For Granted, mm -hmm. which is just about like a friend. Like if you had a friend or whatever, and they just switch up on you, you done gave them everything you have. You my brother, you my sister. I got you for whatever. And even though we could have went to the top together, you did some shady stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like you know, and that's another thing. It goes back to the open your eyes. Like we supposed to be sticking together. You know what I mean? And then the last song I close with is closure. It's just a breakup song, but it's just kind of um, yeah, it's literally a breakup song. It's nothing special about it, but it's just um, I wanted to end it like that just because. Closure is kind of like closing a chapter mm -hmm. in a healthy way, um, especially in the community-wise, the way we deal with mental health, Facts. especially black men in mental health. Um, being healthy when ending relationships is important. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. And um, that's pretty much why I just made that song. And Church. then that was it. Just four solid tracks. That's all I needed. Church. I hear that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm talking about. Definitely can't wait. And, and when is that project dropping? The the Don't Shoot song come out, damn, January 3rd. Okay. Yeah, the, the EP come out January 24th. Okay. Yeah, January 24th. Dope. Sides, you, you, you got any shout outs? Yeah, I'll, I'll shout out my, um yeah, since we on this wave, I'll shout out the, the universe, you know. Got to shout out the ancestors. Got to shout out the Lord, you know what I mean? Got to shout out... My mom, you know, my dad, my girlfriend, you know, I got to shout out um, strangers that I've been meeting since I moved out here. Um, just anybody that, like, I know genuinely love me, you know what I'm saying? I shout them out like that. Facts. That's all. Can you plug in your social medias and streaming sites? Yeah. The the um, music platforms yeah. is uh, Sag Dupree, D-U-P-R-E. Instagram is underscore S-A-D-G-E. Twitter, um, Sag Pre. I could have added the D. And then uh, what else we got? Facebook is Sag Pre too. Damn, TikTok is Sag Pre too. That's it. Yeah. All right. We well, all here, Sag. It was definitely a pleasure having you. We're about to get into this live performance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we taking over. But that's what it is, Sag Pre. Peace. Word. PAU Studios shooting everything, movie status.